Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And yes, you're actually getting to see me for a change. Um, I'm normally the voice behind the camera. And now I'm in front of the camera for some reason. I don't know not why. Um, yes, I hope you're all keeping safe and looking after yourselves in these uncertain times. Um, in the last video, um, a little bit different from what I normally do, we had a train spotter's story. Um, I have the script here. <laughs> it's seven pages and in page six where we actually get to meet the Nighthawk. Um, originally it was supposed to go into the shed um, just for a top up of water and then come back out again with two characters um, actually chatting to the lads and uh, I changed it and turned it into a ghost story if you like and um, I just thought I'd mention this because um, there's always two sides to a story <laughs> and uh, this is what I had down. Um, Joe and Jason were saying, oh look the engine's coming onto shed. And um, Joe turns around and says, oh don't quite believe it. And obviously Pullin, who was showing them around, was still there. And he turned around and says, oh that's strange. We haven't seen that for 20 odd years. And uh, and then it fills up with water. The lads have a chat with the engine crew. And then it leaves again. And that's how that was supposed to have happened. And um, obviously I changed it. And, uh, and I think it was well worth the change. Um, yeah. Ten pages. So, now we come back to building the station. The canopy um, is almost finished, it just lifts off. Um, I've got a little bit more detail to put in, maybe some ribbon um, along the top here like we have at the bottom level but, but flat strips rather than um, rounded rod and um, what you're seeing gives you a true scale of the station it's just over a meter in width from that point to this point it's one meter and five centimeters so uh, yeah so this just gives you the true sense of the scale of the station so I think we'll get back to the build before we get stuck into the build I thought you might like to see the Nighthawk again because I've um, had so many comments on the last video on the weathering and how it was done. So here she is. So now we can have a proper look at the locomotive. Believe it or not, there are two effects on this locomotive that gives it its ghostly look. Firstly, we have the, the smoke, which is basically a craft and toy filling made from polyester. It comes in a great big bag. I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, it's not stuck down. I haven't glued it or anything yet, but it just clings to the locomotive. That's all. That's, I didn't want to use any glues or anything like that. And the other effect is the white powder paint I used from Tamiya Weathering Master comes in a weird cassette like this it, 
there's a grey, a black and a white. If I just open it up, it's not going to be easy with one hand. There you go. Yeah, there it is. So you get a grey, a rust and a white. Uh, you can get that from patterns. I, th I think that's where I got that from. So there you are. That's just the two effects that gives it its ghostly look. Now what I'll do at some point is, because it's powder, I can clean that off and get it back to its um, sparkling condition. <laughs> well, it wasn't really sparkling condition anyway. It's quite an old locomotive. This, if you, if I separate the tender from the locomotive, it's the old type which was converted. If I just separate it, there you go. Where the ring field motor used to be in the tender. And uh, there was crew in there, it's just that you never saw them in the video. I mean it comes in a whopping bag. Um, I'm never going to use all this, not in a lifetime. But that's all it is. And it was so, so cheap as well. I think I only paid about four or five quid for it. Free postage. Right, at last, here we are. We're at the bench. I thought I'd never get here. <laughs> because there's always one more thing. And you're right, there is one more thing. Before we get stuck into the build, I just want to show you this. Now this, as you probably recognize, is a super glue top. Now I've got about three or four of these and I'm saving them. The reason why I'm saving them is if you cut them roughly about 10 mil from the base to the top, you could use them as barbecue baskets or log burners or anything like that for a garden or for a frogman, if you like, by a frogman's hut. You cut them up, paint them black, stick a little bit of, uh, I don't know, maybe a ballast inside, paint it uh, orange or red, and then paint the little, little bits of pieces of the black to make it look like charcoal. And you've got yourself a burner of some sort. So I just thought I'd uh, show you that nice little tip. I mean, I haven't done it myself yet, so it might be something that... Uh, you guys may want to do before me. But there you go, just a little tip for you. So, here we are, the canopy. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to give it one last detail. I'm just going to cut some little strips and just glue them only where the wider spans are. So I'm not going to do it all the way along, so I'm just going to pick out the wider spans of the windows here and uh, what I'm using for that is 0.25 by 0.75 millimeters thick plastic strip it's the same strip I use for the windows to be honest I just thought I'd use up all the offcuts so that's what I'm going to do I've got a lot of them to do so I'm just going to mark them to suit each one because Although it looks equal along there, I can tell you it's probably, by the time you get from one end to the other, there's probably uh, about half a millimetre or so in it. So we're almost coming to the end of doing this little bit of detailing and I've um, found a quicker way of doing it, to be honest. is to just do this, instead of marking out each one, just let that do that, let it hold it in place, push it into the corner and then wait till it goes off and then just cut that last little bit off. And while that's drying we can move on to the next one. Simples. Spread the super glue about a little bit, helps dry it out quicker. Go back to that one, 
Just cut the tip off underneath the ridge there. And then move on to the next one. Right, so now that I've done that little tiny bit of detail, the next thing to do is to start painting all the window frames now. This is going to be a little bit tricky, so all I'm doing is just running the brush along. I'm not going to try and touch any of the glazing if I can help it. Just so. Now when, when you paint on windows, you think of it as straight lines. So you just got to try and keep the brush in a very straight line as you go. Try to remember not to overload the brush. Do happen to get any on the glass just make sure you have a q-tip handy um, with a little bit of thinners on so you can just wipe it all off and then start again see so I've uh, finished the window frames yeah, it took an age to do and uh, we're almost ready now to paint uh, the card um, sections of the roof and I've made a little colour chart here of all the greys I've got and I think I'm going to go with that dark grey because it's got a little bit of green in it which gives it the uh, old weather look so I'm going to go with that I think and then once I've painted the canopy with that colour I'm just going to run up and down each one of these with a tiny bit of silver. We'll blend it in. So let's just see how we get on. As you can see I've done a, a few panels already and um, I quite like it. I quite like the way the colour is turning out. Now then it's a Humbrol Matte 66. It's drying pretty quick too. And I'll tell you what, I'm not even going to bother painting these silver like I was going to. I was just going to give it a little bit of a hint of silver, but I don't think it needs it. I think what I will do once it's done is um, I'll add some green weathering to it and probably some um, sequel droppings or something it's funny because um, it's amazing how your mind kind of wanders when you're um, busy working away like this um, I might even come up with a second story for the three lads because um, I'm still getting some really good comments and feedbacks 
from the story video. Um, a lot of you are saying it brings back memories of your train spotting days. I know when I was a young lad, the only things that were around when I was growing up was the old DMUs and the um, Horton Colliery Electrics I used to run up and down behind well more or less where I used to live on Stevenson's Road so yeah I think I will be doing another story maybe to continue the day after But we shall see. Right, so that's the canopy painted, and it's come out quite well actually. And um, here and there, where I've touched it up, it looks like it's been replaced at some point. Like it's had a bit of yeah work done to it. So I'm quite happy where there's different tones of the grey. But I think the colour has worked out quite well. So the next thing to do is to paint the eaves, if you like, a burgundy red. Now I've already done the other end, so it's just a case of doing this end. Just along that edge, just underneath the, uh, the fascia there. It, now that I've painted it, these eaves, um, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to weather up the whole canopy. Um, but uh, I shall wait till the eaves are dry, but in the meantime, we've got some guttering to put on back at the station. Right, so now we're going to add some guttering. Um, the canopy is going to sit on this ledge here. So I just want to put a piece of guttering along this edge here. Now, this is the stuff that I'm using. I've used this uh, in a previous video um, where I've put the guttering um, around the edge of the building already. And um, basically what I've done here is I've drilled a hole and added a little bit of uh, copper wire which is going to be the down pipe so when that goes in there it'll look like it's got a down pipe we might not be able to see it once it's done because you've got the roof coming over the top of the guttering so it'll be interesting to see that when it's finished so now I've just got to go and paint it two pieces, one for this side and one for the other side. So while I'm waiting for everything to dry, um, I thought I'd do a bit more stone walling. Now I have done a previous video on this stone walling, so I'm just going to show you what it is and what I've done, but if you want to see more, um, you have to go back to the original video I did way 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 back and you can still buy this stuff um, you, they use it for uh, laminate flooring and in all it is cork and as you can see it's very flexible so you can make the walls any shape you want but um, what I do is I tick to take the corners off with a with a Stanley Bave or a scalpel, very sharp, both sides and you can cut big gouges out anywhere you like or anything you like just to get the different undulations in the wall like I've done here so it's not all uniform and then once you've got the corners cut off you just get the sandpaper and then just run it up and down just to smooth the edges over a little bit um, 
and then you just paint it to however you want. Right, once you're finished trimming the edges of your uh, newly found brick walls, you're left with all this. Um, but I'm not going to throw that away. Eventually I'm going to make an iron ore train and this will help fill up the wagons so I'm not going to throw that away so I'm going to salvage that. So now that we've got the canopy on uh, we can now have a look at adding the guttering um, which would just sit under there. We've just got to trim it a length and then glue it in. Um, the colour scheme I think has worked out quite well because I was not sure of how it would be, the canopy would blend in with the rest of the building and uh, I think it's turned out alright. Um, there's still a little bit of weathering I've got to do and I still think the um, windows are too squeaky clean so I may have to dirty them up a little bit. Uh, we'll see. So the next thing is to glue these gutterings in situ. So all I'm doing now is I'm just putting the guttering in at roughly the height that it should be in the same level. As that guttering in the corner there, if I can get it the same height as that, and just push this corner down. Right, try the canopy back on. Perfect. Yep, I'm happy with that. Just the other side to do. Right, so the next thing I want to do is tone down these window frames. They're too white, I, th I think, they're too, too bright white. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use this um, Citadel Shade Adrax Earth Shade paint. It's like a, it's like a brownie mix. And um, all I want to do is just going to go around the window frames and take off some of that white or take back some of that white. I'm not too bothered if I get any on the glass. leave as much on or as little on as you want I think it's all down to personal preference I don't think I want to bother taking any off I think as you can see it's, it's not a big difference uh, if I just show you but it has toned it down it's gone from a bright white there and it's just taking it back a little bit here. It's very subtle, but it just takes that whiteness out of it. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I'll just take it off the windows. Right, so I've completed the windows. Um, they look a, a lot, lot grimier now. Um, the frames are. And there's a little bit on the windows as well, but I might just clean them a little bit, but not too much. So the next thing to do is to add the green. Um, it's a slimy green by AK Interactive. You've probably seen me use this before. So basically I just want to do 
got a little bit of green where we've got the runoff from the windows and a little bit around the edges. And just put a little tiny bit on the frame as well. Do about 10 panels and then wipe it all off. Using a cotton bud. And when it dries it's very subtle, it's hardly, it's hardly there. As you can see, it's just very subtle. Right, at last, that's the canopy finished regarding weathering. Um, don't particularly want to do any more to it, but um, while I was putting the uh, green weathering on, I was wondering to myself, how on earth are these guys going to clean the windows? And I thought to myself, ah, I've got a cunning plan. So I thought to myself, well, there's a running bar right along the top of the windows here. And I can make a ladder, but keep it to one side on this side, but on the other side, keep it somewhere in the middle. And then they could use that running bar to move the ladder along. So I'm going to make up a set of ladders, two pairs, um, just by using these odds and ends here. Now I've used these before to make some wheels for the um, roller gates on the platform. And I've got this uh, little bits of plastic here, so what I'll do is I'll glue them to the back of that and then put some wheels on it to make some ladders. So as you can see I've chopped up this old bit of fence and created a crossbar to add some trolley wheels for this ladder. So what will happen is now is once the glue is dried and it's painted it will sit on there and then run along the top. Now I'm going to put another one on the on the lower edge here somewhere so it can marry up so that there's two wheels resting on the lower window frame as well it's just to keep it off the window so that's the idea and uh, and then the little chap you'll have something to use for cleaning the windows because that will run right along the whole canopy So I've made the first one and by the looks of it, it just sits on there neatly if I'm not dropping it. There you go. So if I just lift this up gently you'll be able to have a closer look. There you go. So that would just run along the top runner and run along the framework of the window. So that's one done, one to go, and we shall see it when it's all finished. Finally, the canopy is finished. Not really, I think I've put enough detail into it. Um, what I have done is I've added a rail, we just go over the top of here, you can just see it. There, I have added a rail so the ladder can continuously move along because, as you know, that window is slightly lower than the original window. So that's it, it's the canopy finished. Um, and it seems to blend in with the rest of the building, which is good. Here's a view of the canopy from the other side of the 
station and you can clearly see the access letters for the window and we've cleaned up the Nighthawk she's got rid of her ghostly look and she's back to normal So I'm quite happy with the way the canopy blends in with the rest of the station. I think the colour choice uh, seems to work quite well. Right, so I think that's all from me for now. And uh, just a couple of things before we go. Um, a couple of you have been commenting on the size of my pencils and as you notice they're getting quite small and uh, as it happens in the post today I've got a great big packet of pencils now these have come from my old friend Steve Harper now I think he's planning on Oh, I think the idea being is with all these pencils I could do lots and lots and lots of sketches for new builds I'm sure that's what he's got in mind but it really tickled me when I <laughs> saw all these pencils I thought oh my god there's enough there to last three or four lifetimes <laughs> anyway thank you Steve very much appreciated mate right the other thing was what happened to the stone walling? So the stone walling I did in the middle of the video was to enhance Stevenson's bank and it's gone all the way along there all the way along to the bridge and I've also added a few extra trees so that it tries to hide the banister for, for the entry into the loft and layout beyond so that's what I've done with the stone walling so I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and uh, we'll catch you again next time bye for now bye